Hello, hello. Thank you so much for tuning into this ASMR True Crime Soft Spoken video. Today we're going to be doing the disappearance case of Alinea Carisi. I want to thank the person who suggested this video. I had never heard this case, so it was really interesting to research. I want to thank everyone who's given recommendations. I have them all on a list, and I intend to do all of them. I may be a little bit slow because, first of all, I have a pretty tough job, and second of all, I really like to do as much research as I can on these cases, so sometimes it takes me a few days to research. So we are going to get started. Yelena Marie Carisi was born in rural Salino, San Marco, in the region of Apulia in southeast Italy on November 29, 1970. She was born to parents Albano Carisi and Romania Power. Her father was better known as Albano, and he is Italian and Albanian. He's a singer, actor, and winemaker. He sold over 165 million records. Her mother was an American actress and singer born in Los Angeles, California. She was born to American actor Tyrone Power and Mexican actress Linda Christine. On July 26, 1970, her parents were married. Her parents began singing in a duo and were known as Italy's Sonny and Cher. They had four children together, Alinea in 1970, their son Yari in 1973, Christelle in 1985, and Romania in 1987, Romania Jr. So being born in the public eye, Alinea was experiencing aspects of fame throughout childhood. In 1983, she was 13 years old and appeared with her parents in the film Champagne and Paradoso. And then as a teenager, she went on to become a letter turner for the Italian version of Wheel of Fortune. She spoke fluent English as well as Italian. She went on to study literature at King's College in London and earned excellent grades. In the summer of 1993, her family came to New Orleans to shoot the movie Lost America. Elena was staring with her parents when she met Alexander Masakila. He was a 54-year-old street musician who performed in several countries in Europe. Fellow street musicians described him as a yard spinner with a penchant for charming young women, usually tourists. He sounds sketch to me. Her father recalls her his daughter went on a date with Alexander that summer, and she returned in the morning, drugged out. They returned back home after this trip, and Yelena was 23 at the time in continuing her studies. She began to entertain the idea of traveling the world solo with a nothing but a backpack and her journal. She decided to take a break from studying and return to Italy where she sold all her belongings in order to pay for the trip. She began this trip in 
in South America and then went on to travel to Belize. After spending a few months in Belize, she decided to leave the day after Christmas in 1993. And she decided to go by bus to New Orleans, Louisiana. That must have been the longest bus ride ever. Her brother Yari, who was also an experienced traveler, decided to surprise his sister by visiting her for Christmas. He arrived on a rainy day, December 27th, to the village of Hopkins. He went door to door searching for her, only to discover that the previous day she had boarded a bus to Mexico. At first, she arrived to Florida, and then a few days later, after telling her parents, she feared two men in Florida who were trying to drug and kill her. She then traveled back to New Orleans, which had been six months after that initial visit with her family. She checked in on December 31st to a cheap hotel called Ladale. This hotel was located in the 700 block of St. Charles Avenue, which is about five blocks from the French Quarter. And at this time, she was staying with Alexander. A hotel manager reports that they seemed out of place together, but that maybe they were just helping each other out. Now she's in her 20s, early 20s, and he's in his 50s. He had this gray must beard mustache, and it just looked out of place. And at that time, Alenia specifically asked for a room with two beds. So on December 31st, she made an international call from New Orleans and spoke briefly with her mother, who did not approve of this trip to the United States. She had arrived alone in the capital, Louisiana. She explained to her mother and father that she was going to write a book about homeless artists and artists. Alexander says that they did share a hotel room, but they slept in separate beds during this time, and that she refused to have a sexual relationship with him despite his wanting. He had a history of drug use and sexual violence. He had a lot of crime against women as well, it looks like. So, it was reported that she seemed fascinated by him. She referred to him as a mentor. During her stay, she begins to immerse herself in the street culture and kept company with street musicians and homeless people. She painted and took notes in a journal about people she met. She stated that she planned to write a book, possibly a novel, about her experiences. What's the difference between a book and a her father believes she may have been using drugs during this period. According to the hotel, Eileenia left without her personal belongings around noon on January 6th and never returned. She was last seen wearing a floral print dress and a waist-length white jacket. Alexander remained at the hotel until he checked out slash got evicted on January 14th for trying to pay a bill using a traveler's check made payable to Eileenia. After, I'm sure, this awkward exchange, 
he asked the hotel to keep some of their stuff for a few hours. So the hotel holds items for him, but he never returns for them. The unclaimed items included her backpack filled with clothing and personal items such as her notebooks and passport. In the next few days, Albania in Romania again called the hotel where she was staying, but no one answered. When Eilenia hadn't made contact by phone, her parents, who were located in Rome, were frantic. They called a family friend, who then reported her missing to New Orleans police on January 18th. Police then began the investigations. As they began investigating, they began talking to witnesses. A security guard named Albert Cordoba states that on January 6th, around 11.30 p.m., while on patrol around Oldenburg Park, which is located on the west bank of Mississippi River, he saw a blonde woman sitting on a pier. She was described as blonde, age 18 to 24, and very pretty. When the security guard told her she couldn't be in the park after hours, she reportedly replied, quote, It doesn't matter. I belong to the river. The woman then jumped into the Mississippi River and swam towards the center. He then went on to call the police and he witnessed the woman begin to struggle and ask for help. A wake then was created by a passing boat, and the woman went under the water and did not reemerge. A search involving boats and police helicopters lasted for hours, but the victim was never located. It has never been confirmed that the woman who drowned in the river was Eilenia, nor have any bodies recovered from the river in the following months been identified as her. Police did not uncover any hard evidence that Eilenia met with foul play. Her parents flew to New Orleans after she was reported missing, and they began to fear she might have run into something dangerous. Her mother states, I've heard a lot of strange stories in New Orleans about slave trade and girls being abducted. I believe she's being held somewhere against her will. On January 31st, Alexander was brought in for questioning in connection to Eileenia's disappearance. He claimed that he did not know where she was, and police were unable to hold him due to lack of evidence. A few days later, he was arrested, but not because of Eilenia. A former girlfriend accused him of rape. Details of the incidents were never released, and the charges were dismissed March 10th. And since then, he has dropped out of sight. No other further clues were reported, but then in 1996, two years after her disappearance, an unidentified caller claimed that she was still alive, but her whereabouts were unknown. Her mother believed that she was still alive, unlike her father, who states that he immediately sensed his daughter might have had the worst fate. He said, quote, I knew right away that she might be dead. At first, her parents refused to believe the swimmer was their daughter. They point out to a reported sighting of Eilenia that was indicated a day later by a Croatian fire fisherman who was visiting New Orleans. 
The man was shocked when he made an offhand remark in Croatian about the woman's good looks, and she thanked him in Italian. In 2007, however, her father stated for the first time that he believed the security guard's story about the Mississippi River jump. So her parents separated in 1999. In June 2008, a German weekly reported that Eileenia was living in a convent in Arizona in the U.S. state where her mother owns a home. Her father dismissed the report as, quote, shameful speculation, connecting not a bit of truth. In 2014, at the request of Albano, the court officially declared Eileenia dead. And in 2018, a photo was actively discussed on web in which a girl somewhat similar to Eileenia was captured in Venice in 2000, but no evidence ever linked to her. In 2007, her mother returned to the United States. Her father remained in Italy. Members of the family are divided in their opinion to whether she is alive, and her case still remains unsolved. If you have any information about this case, you can contact New Orleans Police Department at 504-821-2222. So the theories in this case, the one theory of course is that she was the young woman who jumped into the river and that her body was never located due to strong currents. Perhaps she was under the influence, which impacted her judgment and resulted into her jumping into the river. However, it was reported that while visiting New Orleans with her family that summer, her father witnessed her go into the Mississippi River, but got scared and was able to get out. And he said she had been under the effects of marijuana. So, some believe she may have been a victim of a serial killer. There was a corpse found in Florida that at some point was believed to be her possibly. So there was a truck driver named Keith Hunter Jefferson, also known as the Happy Face Killer for the smile that drew when he sent letters to the media. The alleged murderer would kill at least eight women between 1990 and 1995 in six different states including Nebraska, California, Florida, Washington, Oregon, and Wyoming. And in 1996, he confessed that he had taken the life of a girl he met at a service station in Tampa, Florida. So perhaps she may have hitchhiked and ended up in Florida where she met Keith. The remains were found two years earlier and DNA was taken from Eileen's father, which then confirmed the remains were not her. So there's also the speculation about these two men she referred to her parents while in Florida, where she indicated she was fearful of them. You know, were they involved somehow? Did they drug her, lure her back? You know, possibly murdering or, as her mother kind of stated, some kind of sex trafficking, drug trafficking, which is one of the scariest theories I always come across. I hate that it's like, it's so, um, 
And then, of course, there's the speculation of Alexander. She was staying at him at the, at the hotel. He never reported her missing. He could have easily been one of the last people to see her alive. He's been in other cases of violence against women. Her belongings were in his possession. He tried to pay for the hotel using her check. Um, so it all just kind of gives a lot of suspicious vibes around him. I saw a little bit of speculation that her brother was not honest about his last interaction with his sisters. There seemed to have been rumors that began that he actually secretly met his sister in Santo Domingo in the DR. He denies this and there's no evidence and he states he's never been in Santo Domingo. And I don't really know what that would connect to the case. I did see that floating around in some of the readings, however. Not everyone believes that Elenia is dead. No traits of her remains were found in the river. There has been multiple sightings of her since January of 1994 in the United States, Italy, and Europe. Even more than a decade after her disappearance, none of the sightings have been confirmed, and she still continues to be a missing person. It would also be quite difficult without her passport. So, you know, the sightings in the United States might be a possibility, but um, some, you know, kind of say that like maybe she decided to go off the grid and start a new life from fame and just start over. She would be 53 years old today. So, another really bizarre case that has a lot of different lines you could go down and speculate. So tell me what you guys think. So, thank you so much for the wonderful comments. I get so excited when I see comments and likes. It's amazing. I'm sorry. I'm trying to do once a week. Thank you for your patience and just being awesome people who watch my channel. I am a diehard soft-spoken, so don't worry. I am here for it. I think my next one, I'm going to do Whisper, and then kind of just right back into Soft Spoken. Um, but thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a good day or good night, wherever you are. I hope you have a good day tomorrow. Thank you so much.